What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's everything inside the world of Apple, like the creamy filling of a Twinkie. Mm. And they're back, in case you didn't know. All right, let's get to the show and a new report from Frost and Sullivan that says Apple has claimed the majority of the streaming device market share with the Apple TV at 56%. These are dedicated streaming boxes, so you won't find the PS3 or Xbox, but Roku came in second at 21.5%, and TiVo came in third at 6.5%. The others were made up of familiar names like the Boxy TV and Logitech Review. So not too bad for a hobby device that has added more channels like HBO Go and Watch ESPN. But everyone has continued to ask what will make the Apple TV TV special and why should we even care? Well, according to tech journalist Jessica Lesson, she reports that Apple has been negotiating with cable companies and TV networks to offer a premium version of the Apple TV service that would allow you to skip ads and would compensate the networks for the lost revenue. There are no specifics for how the service would work or how much it would cost, but Apple has been talking about how they want to make the current TV experience better, and this is a pretty compelling option. Now, I think the big question comes down to how much would you be willing to pay a month on top of your current bills for a service like this? Is it $30, $40, $50 a month or more? Let us know your price and your thoughts. Send them to the Apple Byte at CNET.com and we'll talk about it next week. Now in iPhone news, according to All Things D and Jeffrey's analyst Peter Misek, production ramp up of the iPhone 5S should begin around the end of this month. Misek says that Apple started a small batch production of the iPhone 5S last month and is ready to ramp up. Now, Digitimes is also reporting that the next-gen iPhone may see constrained supplies at launch due to poor yield rates of the fingerprint recognition chip designed by Authentic that will be included in the phone. They claim it actually delayed the iPhone's ramp up for production to late July because of issues with producing the fingerprint sensor. Now, we're still expecting to see the next iPhone in the fall around early September. Now, in some potentially sobering news for all you iPad mini fans, Multiple reports are now saying that Apple will be releasing a thinner and lighter iPad mini this year. But brace yourself, the Retina iPad mini will see an almost bezel-free design, but it's expected to launch in early 2014. I know how you feel, first world problems. Now, Digitimes also reports that Apple's fifth gen iPad is on its way with a thinner and lighter design and the supply chain is starting small-scale production on the new full-size iPad this month. All right, on to the quick bites. Apple and Samsung have had their beef, but the Korea Economic Daily reports Apple and Samsung have signed a deal for the two companies to work together on future A-series chips for iOS devices, specifically covering A9 chips based on the 14 nanometer process starting in 2015. And more frenemies working together, Microsoft has released a native Outlook web app mail application for iOS devices. Now, OWA for iPhone and iPad are free, but in order to use the app, you'll need to subscribe to their Office 365 service and have the latest update of Exchange Online. So there's a lot of pieces that need to be in place. And music creators, Apple has released a brand new version of Logic dubbed, get it, Logic Pro X for $199. Now, one of the new features is the instrument track called Drummer that automatically plays along with your song with a wide variety of drumming styles and techniques. Now, the Logic Remote Companion app, it's on the iPad and it allows to control and play with Logic from your iPad. Well, that's also free. And finally, in a new segment that, you know, we'll do once in a while and I really decided to make it up, it's our Apple Biter of the Month. I know, so check it out. Meet Stephanie, she's from Maryland, and according to her dad, Vern, she has a crush on me, and they watch the Apple Bite together for different reasons. Yeah, sure you do, Vern. Anyways, I love the pick. Thanks so much for watching, and if any of you guys want to send in a picture to potentially be the Biter of the Month, you can send it in to us at the Apple Bite at CNET.com or just tweet me at Brian Tong, and if you make me <laughs> giggle, we'll feature you on the show. All right, that's going to do it for this week. I'm off to Comic-Con. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another Bite of the Apple.